Destiny changer. God is my destiny changer. He has changed my destiny, my destiny always. He has changed my destiny, my destiny forever. Powerful healer, he's the powerful healer. He has healed my broken heart several times already. He has healed my broken heart several times already. His name is Yahweh. God's name is Yahweh. He's the miracle working God. His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. He's the miracle working God. His name is Yahweh. Destiny changer. God is a destiny changer. Lord, come and change your destiny of someone here today. Come and change your destiny of someone here today. Powerful healer. He's my powerful healer. He will heal a broken heart of someone here today. God will heal a broken heart of someone here today. His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. He's the miracle working God. His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. He's the miracle working God. His name is Yahweh. Miracle walker, he is the miracle walker. Come and do a miracle for all of us today. As we study the word of God, we need your hand of touch. Miracle walker, you are the miracle walker. Come and do a miracle for listeners today. Come and do a miracle for all of us today. We're ready, Yahweh. We're ready, Yahweh. Just touch your lives in a way that only you can. We're ready, Yahweh. We're ready, Yahweh. There's just a life in a way that only you can. Your name is Yahweh, Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. You're the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. We call you Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. We call you Yahweh. You're the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. You're the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Greetings, amazing people. Welcome. It's a beautiful Sunday. It's a beautiful start of the week. I hope you're having a great time so far. I don't know about you, but I am so Please, if you're just tuning in, this is actually a chapter a day, your favorite Bible program with your favorite girl, Princess Cleason, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> yes, I laugh a lot. So yeah, that really, that really sounds like me. So today is actually the 8th of May and there are a lot of amazing people are born today. On a chapter a day, what we do is we get to study the word of God to know who we are in Christ so that we can know what we should be doing here on earth and what we should not be doing so that we can live this Christian life beautifully and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. That's the whole idea. Oh yeah, that's the whole idea. Yes, because the word of God has been so thwarted. Like you listen to some people and you, you feel the cringe. You're like, are we starting the same Bible? Like did this person take this from the Bible? Where did it come from? And you're just so shocked. So we had to start reading the Bible here. So we read the Bible together. It's not like I just read it from my own place. You can actually open your Bible while we're reading it. And I always tell us that I'm stuck to the King James version like glue. So of course, 
we read the King James Version of the Bible and of course we get to do what we have to do. So today it's a beautiful day the Lord has made. We're rejoicing and we're glad in it. And if you're just tuning in, this is your first time. We're really grateful that you are here to be a part of our program. We're really, really grateful. Well, some people, I don't know your profile picture very well. So maybe if you actually get to write us, then we're going to be able to say hello to you or give you a shout out. Oh, welcome, Mr. Dennis Pivier. Pivar. Pivar. Hope I pronounced the name right. Welcome on a chapter a day. We're glad to have you. I uh, hope you had a blessed Sunday so far. Some people are still going to church. Some people um, are just getting done with church. Some people are done with church, done and dusted like I am because this is night for me. So I wish you all the very best and I pray that God answers your prayers as you go to church expectant. May your expectations not be cut short. So let's go. Today is the 8th of May. We need to pray and hand over the session to God Almighty. And then we start the birthday party. Today we're going to be reading Joshua chapter 16, is it? Yeah, it's supposed to be Joshua chapter 16. Yesterday we did 15. I hope I'm not making a mistake. Oh, it's right. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Dennis, for being here. I really appreciate the fact that you're here. You know, we have 24 hours of life and giving me even five minutes of your life is very, very important. So I don't take it for granted. I really appreciate you for being here and God bless you. So let's get to prayer and hand over this session to God. And then we get right on with a chapter a day. Today, we're reading Joshua chapter 16, George's chapter 16, and he has 31 verses. That's an averagely short read, so I'm sure we're going to have a swell time together. Well, thank you for this day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you for loving us even when we're unlovable. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sakes. Lord, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for setting us free from captive, from bondage, from shame. We just say thank you. We can't thank you enough, but we can't just but say thank you. Lord, take preeminence, put now forevermore. Do for us that which only you can do, that no man can do. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that even as we start this session today, we've come to sup and dine with you again. We know it's going to be a balanced diet. It's just going to be perfect for us. And when we leave your table, we'll never go back the same. Lord, everybody's coming here today to watch this video, participate on a chapter a day with an expectation. I pray that our expectations are going to be met way beyond what we are even thinking or imagining because your word says it will call on you you show us great and mighty things which we've never ever known so lord we say thank you we're grateful we're truly grateful for your goodness your loving kindness and your tender mercies for us increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day today take preeminence but now forever mom for in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving amen amen people so let's get on to the birthday party hmm? it's birthday party time let's get on with the birthday party people i'm sure some of these people have been looking at me and saying like princess why have you not said happy birthday to me yet well because i like to be the first to say happy birthday to people and if i'm not the first i kind of technically try like i should be the last person to say happy birthday to you so in a bit to do that, sometimes people think I've forgotten their birthday. Well, they wish that I forget their birthday. If I've taken your birthday once and I've written it up to I've written it in my birthday book, I can't forget it. I can't. I just can't. So um, let's go with the birthday people and uh, see what we have to do. Let's start it up. So the first person is Mr. Remy Akane Wang. Abel, and uh, this is my very, very good friend. We got to know each other when, when I was at a university. He had already graduated, but um, he had a friend that had a documentation around our university, and so he used to come there, and then he, we got to know each other. He's a very nice person, and of course, he's from my tribe, so it's like, oh, yeah, Bakasi people kind of click, you know? Well, they say women don't have a tribe until they get married. I don't know how that works. But I'm not perceived about that because I'm a child of God and I know that my husband is also going to come from the kingdom of heaven. So I'm not a lost country, as they say. But anyways, my dad is Bakasi. So, of course, um, Mr. Ikanewan is Bakasi as well. Well, I don't know anything. No, I know a couple of things in the dialect. 
but I can't speak the dialect very well. But Mr. Abon can speak so, so well. He's a very nice person. He always encourages me to be my best. He believes in me way beyond what I believe in myself. Well, I think this is true for a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends believe that I can do much more than I do. Sometimes I don't. So I remember when we were really reading that passage where they were talking about Gideon not believing in himself until God had to use his enemies to tell him who they believe that he is before he believed in himself. It was that serious. But when I read that, it really got to me because I've basically to an extent being that kind of person that I really don't believe like I can do some things until some of my friends will push me and push me and push me and then boom, I do it. Then I'm like, I didn't know I could do this. Oh my God. You know, like I'm in shock that I could really do that, you know? So yeah, basically that's what happened. So Mr. I kind of want Remy, happy birthday to you. He's a twin. I don't know his twin brother's name. And I used to really get confused between two of them. But at some point I could figure out because one smiles like crazy. He smiles like a lot. I remember sometime I met his brother and I was talking to his brother and thinking he was the one. And then the brother just burst into laughter. But Mr. Remy actually smiles like he laughs like a lot. He's the jovial one of the twins. So that's how I got to figure them out. And even my dad and his younger brother, a lot of people used to think they were twins, which is not surprising why people think my two younger brothers are twins, but they're not. One is younger, one is older. So my dad and his younger brother, they resemble a lot. So people used to think they were twins. The way you could differentiate between two of them is still the same thing. Like one is the smiley one. My dad used to really like he was lively and lovable. But my uncle used to be very serious and stern. He's a nice person, but he gets to be very serious and stern. You know, that kind of same thing with my kid brothers. There is one who is just quiet and reserved. There's the other one who is just out there, like outgoing. He's just all out there. So happy birthday to you, Mr. Remy. The next person is Mom Gloria. We actually met on... Um, um, we actually met on a certain platform, a, a YouTube, uh, not YouTube, a WhatsApp platform for ladies where they were sharing the word of God and were learning. They were doing a lot of trainings to empower women and all that. That's where we met. She's really a nice person. Um, I remember one time when I was supposed to be a speaker uh, on, on, at the event and she was the one who hosted me. I think if I'm not mistaken, she was the one who was coordinating that day that I actually um, was the speaker. So she's a very nice person. I love the way she came to talk to me and all that. It was really, really good. Happy birthday to you, Mom Gloria. The next person is Mom Evengo. Mom Evengo is like, like, she's literally like a sister, but from another mother. We grew up together. We're living in one area when we're all younger. And then at some point we all grew older and people traveled. Some people went to different towns and different cities. And then we changed. But after a while again, we got connected again after some time, you know, social media makes connections really easy. So I got to connect with her again and I was very happy. She's She's the quiet one in their house. Like her, her younger sister is my schoolmate, my friend and all that. But she was a bigger one. So she was actually with my other sister, I think. Yeah, she was actually with my other sister. Our family, like I always say, my family, right, actually had people of almost every age of every other family. So if there was a bigger girl in my family, there is a family that had a big girl and maybe a small boy. And the small boy would probably be one of the ages with my younger brothers. So we had literally a mark or a range of every family in our family. It was so cool. So mom Eva was actually like with my other sister. She was with my other sister. And then her younger sister was with me. The same. So happy birthday to you, mom Eva Ngor. Um, she was a very quiet person. Like I said, she was a kind of reserved kind of person. But of course, we used to have really great times together, especially when families are doing birthdays. You know, we're going to this one's birthday. They're celebrating here. My dad used to celebrate birthdays like crazy. It's like, I'm not surprised that I'm a birthday freak. I'm not surprised. My dad used to be like that. You know, he celebrated our birthdays every single season. We used to have crazy celebrations in my house. Like we're just celebrating all the time, you know. So the next person is happy birthday, ma'am, Yvette Ngoi. The next person is 
Mr. Harry. Mr. Harry actually is a very good friend of mine. We actually were in the university together. I think he was ahead of me in the university. And then we became very good friends, a very nice person. Oh my God. So there's never a dull moment with Mr. Harry. He can make you laugh your hearts out, literally. Oh my God. He is so, so funny and so lively and so friendly. And of course, also very humble. And we got to know each other. And then, yes, life took us away from each other. And then after a point, social media got us connecting back again. And then my best friend also got us connecting back again, like physically. Because my best friend knew him. And then my best friend's husband actually knew him. And then they were connected together. So we kind of saw and met each other again. Small world, right? It's so beautiful. Happy birthday, Mr. Harry, a.k.a. Le ha. <laughs> And then the next person is Auntie Cynthia. Auntie Cynthia actually got, to, we got to know each other when I was doing my program on the radio. I was doing a certain program called Something to Sing About. That program was really nice. It was there to give people the opportunity to be able to testify about the goodness of God in their lives. People who were camera shy, people who were um, um, crowd shy, you know, it gives you a, an opportunity to be able to do, it was a radio program, so nobody's watching you, so you just, Imagine that the people will be listening, you know, but they're not seeing you. you you're not standing on a, on a stage and then you're frightened. No. So you're just behind the scene and then you're giving your testimony. It was really good. It was a calling program. That's how I knew Auntie Cynthia. She had a, um, a shop where she was selling clothes, female clothes. I don't know if male clothes were there as well, but I think it was basically female clothes. And so I remember sometimes I'll go to buy. She would give me all kinds of discounts. Sometimes she would just give me the clothes. Those are the pecs for being someone who works on the radio. So I had a lot of people giving me gifts and stuff, sending me airtime, sending me money. It was like, it was on a constant, it was on a consistent basis. That's God for you. You know, it was very scary when I was leaving my paid job to go and do a voluntary job because god said so but it was it was the best thing that ever happened to me i would say that was one of the best decisions i ever made and that's how i became grounded in the things of god because there the people groom you like oh my god senior prince junior prince um the hebrew boy in fact my director he was just the best of all of them I mean, it was just amazing at the radio. So that's how I got to know Auntie Cynthia. She was calling on the program. And then one of the days I went and met her. And when I saw her, because some people started calling me and they said they want to see me. They would love to see me. If I'm free at this time, this time I could come and see them. They'll tell me where they are. And it was really beautiful. I had a lot of pecs for working on the radio. So I don't regret it ever. The, la the next person is uh, this little 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 girl called miracle deborah um miracle deborah is the daughter of my very very good friend one woman of god on fire called mom tipa melvis is her daughter and she turns four today um i don't know miracle deborah but i know that just the fact that her name is miracle i'm sure she's the bundle of miracle to her entire family i'm sure that she has um her arrival brought a lot of testimonies in that family. So I'm wishing this little lovely princess a very, very happy birthday. And I pray that she's going to stand out anywhere that she is. She's going to stand out amongst her peers that she would just be the best. She would just be the head always and never the tail. That's what I'm saying to baby miracle. I know that your parents are bringing you up in the Lord because they are people who love God and they're loving the Lord and doing the will of God she's a woman of god on fire so i can't just doubt the fact that you little princess you're going to grow up knowing god and loving god and you're going to be a fire brand yes darling i wish you all the best okay the last but not the list how am i going to put this out there mr ni Aaron kwai so i don't know if i pronounce the name very well afishapa happy birthday to you Mr. Nee was one of the persons who made my experience in Ghana really, really, I mean like really, really, really beautiful. When I mean beautiful, I mean like totally and completely beautiful. Like this guy would go all out to help me get some things that I needed, especially like I was foreigner. So there were some things that were kind of challenging for me to get, but he would go way out of his 
his self or himself to do these things for me. I, I'm really grateful for the people I met when I traveled. You know, a lot of people have really crazy experience when they travel out and go to different countries and they're expatriates and all that. But I've really had great experiences. I've never really had that kind of experience where it was just so bad, bad, bad. No, 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 no. I have had really great experiences. And of course, getting to know Mr. Nee Aaron Quay was one of the most amazing things that happened to me in Ghana. And he was very friendly, was very welcoming. He, even when I'm ranting, he'll be there to listen and help. I mean, like, oh my God, this guy supported me in ways I can't even explain. He also was one of those persons who, when he knew that I love food, he made me taste almost all kinds of Ghanaian delicacies, almost all kinds. And then I got to know his fiance then, and she was also an impeccable human being. Oh my God, it was just so lovely. They were just a pair. A beautiful pair and of course I missed the wedding I wish I was there so mr. Nee Aaron Cray actually really really did help me when I was in Ghana um, even sometime I remembered sometime when um, I had to look for a house where I had to leave in he did everything he was following up I mean he was praying so hard that there was somebody who was in some apartment that had to leave that was theirs and he was praying so hard that the person should really leave but i guess god didn't want me to stay there then so um we waited and waited the person wasn't leaving but we ended up getting another place he's the one who would show me around show me places direct me help me get some things that i needed to get oh my god it was just so beautiful sometimes when i was feeling down he's oh, like princess you're better than this i know like I said, I've gotten to meet and encounter people that they really make me see who I am and, and bring out that me that God ordained, that God purposed. Yes, Mr. Neeron is one of those people. He can so talk me to do anything. He can talk me into doing anything. He used to say that I was the, I was that person to him instead, that he doesn't just know, but sometimes when he ask my opinion about something when i just give him an opinion he knows that that's exactly what he's supposed to do like for some weird reason so it felt like he could talk me to doing things that's the same way i could talk him to doing things but thank god that we're children of god so we talk each other to doing really good things not bad things you know i couldn't talk him to go kill somebody or go steal or something no 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 i could talk him to getting a new job applying for a next position you know traveling or not traveling if he desired to you know he would just ask my opinion we just ask each other things like oh what do you think about this this is what i'm about to do right now what do you think i mean like it was really really amazing that's how when you have people like that in your life that god gives you don't take them for granted no no we have times where we fight but no mr knee Aaron, when i need something and i need help he's going to be there I don't know. I used to just say that this guy was probably an angel walking. He was just a garden angel that got sent for me. It was really nice. And uh, of course, they would be the reasons, one of those reasons why I want to go back to Ghana again. Even if it's just a visit, even if it's just for a week or a couple of days, I would really be grateful to have to go and meet them again. And of course, congratulate them physically for their wedding. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. I feel like I'm going to just get all emotional. Well, this live stream is not about Mr. Nee Aaron Cray, but Mr. Nee Aaron Cray, I'm grateful to God. I'm forever grateful that our paths crossed and I got to know you. And I pray that God is going to bless you tremendously. Tremendously. Okay, so let's go again. Happy birthday, Mr. Remy Ekanewang Ebon. Happy birthday, Mom Gloria. Happy birthday, Mam Yvette Ngo. Happy birthday, Mr. Harry, a.k.a. Leha. Happy birthday, Auntie Cynthia. And happy birthday, happy birthday, Miracle Deborah, my little princess. And happy birthday, Mr. Nee Aaron Cray. So let's pray for all the birthday people. It's so hot, people. I need to get my fan. Okay, so let's pray for all the birthday people. Lord, we thank you for this additional year you've given to the lives of these people. These ones I've called by names and the ones that we don't have on our birthday book, but we're born on this eighth day of May. Father, I pray that you're going to bless them in ways beyond their reasonable understanding. Open the windows of heaven and pour the choices of your blessings upon their lives and rebuke every devourer, O oh God.
but i bless them in a way that will be a blessing to their generation and beyond and because of the overflow of this blessing oh god that people who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings lord i pray oh god that the blessings is going to encompass them as a shield run about so much so that no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus, any tongue that rises against them, you shall condemn. Father, I pray that they will increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men, O Lord. Father, I pray that they will keep shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day because their light is just going to keep shining bright because you're going to be with them through it all. Father, I pray, O God, that you're going to cause money to meet money in their pockets, blessings to meet blessings in their life, favor to meet favor in their lives, even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor today. Cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers. Give them the grace and the power, all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Father, open their eyes to know those they're supposed to be destiny helpers too, and cause them to strategically position themselves and help these people when the time is right. So too we know that you're going to strategically position their destiny helpers all around them, so that when they also cry out for help, help is going to be available for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to open opportunities for them that only you can. That will cause them to expand. That will cause them to triumph. That will cause them to get to the top. And I pray you teach them all the techniques and methods that it takes to get to the top and stay there permanently. It's not just about getting there, but Lord, we want to be there permanently. So I pray that you're going to teach them how to get to the top and stay there permanently. Father, I pray that you open doors that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you. Lord, I pray that you're going to divinely connect them to things and people that are going to cause them to progress and be their best and disconnect them divinely from people and things that will cause them not to be their best or to retrogress, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to grant them all that it takes to be able to fulfill purpose, that if they get to a place where they feel overwhelmed, O oh Lord, that if they get to a place where they feel overwhelmed, Lord, you're going to make them transform, oh God. You're going to make them hear a clean, loud voice that would say, this is the way, walk down in it, in the mighty name of Jesus. That they will not stray the path, they will not derail. They would stay on course and do that which they have to do to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless the works of their hands, whatever the lady hands on you, prosper it, wherever they tread their feet upon you, give it to them as a possession. Lord, you're going to guide and direct them in all that they do, that the people are going to see your good works in their lives and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Cause them to stand out and not fit in, that they'll be the head and not the tail, that they'll be above and never beneath in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because I know you're a faithful father. We seal every prayer request to the blood of Jesus. We say thank you because we know it's sealed, settled, signed, and dusted. So we say thank you for doing it already in their lives. We pray, oh God, that you perfect all that concerns them. Give them a Psalms 126 state where it will be continuous laughter and singing. And we all are going to see and say, wherefore, we are glad because of the great things that God has done in their lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, let it be so, amen, as we've prayed in their lives, let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in their lives, let it be so, amen, 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 in their lives, so, amen, as we have prayed, amen, let it be in their lives. Happy birthday, people, all the best. I pray that you get the very, very best as you stay on earth. If Christ tarries to come, you all are going to be coming back here next time physically to give testimonies of the goodness of God when he has written beautiful stories on the pages of your lives. In Jesus' name. Welcome, Mommy Ryan Randy. Happy Mother's Day to you. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all the amazing mothers. And when they're talking about mothers here, it's not just biological mothers because I know some people will be like, oh, okay, minus me. Mm-mm. Your mother, if you're taking care of children, if you're taking care of people, their spiritual mothers, their biological mothers, their adopted mothers, their lots and lots of mothers. Mm -hmm. So you're one of them. And uh, I'm proud of the fact that you are part of my life. 
God bless you. For the things that you do that go noticed and unnoticed, we love you, mothers. For the sacrifices you make so that we can be better people, we love you, mother. For all the great things that you do for us, we love you, mother. Can a mother forget her suckling child? She can't. The bond between a mother and a child is impeccably awesome. Like, you can't explain it you can't just understand it like that but it's just beautiful and the sacrifices that mothers make is just natural it's in it it's in it they don't think about it i know a lot of times when my mother will go hungry and make us eat i'm worried that she's older so she's supposed to eat we could survive without eating for a day or two you know but my mom is literally gonna give her food to my brothers to my kid brothers oh yeah those are moms for you. That's how much mothers can be. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our lives. Those who are spiritual, those who are physical, those who are biological, those who are in any way that someone is a mother to you, be grateful. And in any way that you're a mother to someone, I pray that God blesses you for your good work. Okay, so we're getting on with the Bible party. Let's get the Bible party started. Get the Bible party started. Ready or not, here I come. It's George's chapter 16. We're going really fast. We're almost done with this book. Yeah. It has 21 verses, actually. 21 chapters. So let's go. George's chapter 16. I have to get it ready and get it set. Judges chapter 16. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gates of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight. And arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the Lord of the and the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green wits, thou wert that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green weeds which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the wheat as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith. And said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait, abiding in the chamber. And he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my hair, of my head, with the web, and as she fastened it with the pin, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awake out of his sleep, and went away with the pin of the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me this three times, and hast not told me wherewith thy great strength lieth. 
And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There had not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he had shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off his seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I'll go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his hair began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistine gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God and to rejoice. For they said, our God had delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God had delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country. We slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may fill the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and one which it brought, it was borne up. And, and Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left hand. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Estal in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, Pastor John Light is here. Let's let's add him up to the to the live stream. Oh my God, I hope that this works. Please come through. We've missed you in the chapter today. So if you're coming live today, I'll really be grateful. Oh my God, please, this should work. Okay, so let's talk about this scripture. Let's talk about this chapter for today while we're waiting for Pastor John Light to join us. Oh my God, please make this work. Make this work. Okay, so this already has to do with I've, I've spoken here several times about divine positioning, being at the right place at the right time and doing the right thing. But it just looks like Samson had just got it all jumbled up. Samson got it all mixed up. Like he was always at the wrong place. He was always just doing that. I don't understand this guy. Like, I don't know. Sometimes God gives us so much and he expects so much of us. And we're just, we're just frustrating the grace of God. Basically, that's what I would say. Some of us just frustrate the grace of God. God has empowered us with so much gifts and talent and we're just wasting it. We're just not doing the right things. We're just not using it for the right purpose. I don't understand why at every point in time, this guy was just drawn only to the wrong kind of women. 
I, 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 I kind of understand that English adage that says behind a successful man, there is a woman because it's, it's crazy. Women have this kind of influence on men that if we women understand, we'll not be fighting men's position. We'll just use that and use it the right way and then cause the men to be great men, cause the men to do the things that God expects them to do. We are help mates. We should be women. We should be happy that we're women. I want to be a woman. I want to be wooed by a man. I want to be pampered. I don't want to be a man. Like I've said all the times, no man wants to marry a man. No man wants to be with a man. No. They want to enjoy the femininity. They want to enjoy the, the beauty of an helpmate. Be a helpmate. Don't be a man. You can't go and be dragging with your husband. You can't go and be dragging. Oh, nah. Nah, nah, nah. I want to be pampered. I want to be loved. I, I want to feel the, 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 the side that God created me to be. I want to feel that. I don't know about you, but if this feminism thing is really about fighting men, I am part of it. Just be the woman. We have a whole lot of potentials. We have a whole lot of things we can do to make the world a better place. But we're just not using it right. We're using it for the wrong reasons. It's the same thing that happened to Delilah here. He was using it for the wrong reasons. Samson was always just in the wrong place. I don't get it. He went to Gaza, saw an halot, slept with the halot. I mean, like, oh my God. Like, the guy was just crazy. He was just... I don't know. The spirit of lust was just doing terrible things in his life. And it looks like when you started already having these affairs, I said some time ago that I saw a certain picture that scared me to my wit's end. Like they put a picture of the, 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 the inside, the inside of someone who sleeps around, someone who fornicates, someone who adulterates. They put the inside of the soul bonding, the soul ties that you have, the amount of souls that you have in your life. Like as in, maybe you're sleeping with a guy who also sleeps with other women and these other women also sleep with other guys. And so there is just that bond, bond, bond is bonding from here to there to there. And then it bonds with you. Oh my God. And then you begin to wonder when you start having some kinds of problems, you're looking at your background, you're looking at your lineage. Nothing is connected. What is happening to you is not connected with your lineage. No, you can't carried it from somewhere sleeping around got that to you you get to bond with some with some i don't know some lineage that is just not funny they're trying to trace it from your background it ain't there because it didn't come from there it came from your promiscuity so he goes on and he's sleeping with these women and all. And I don't understand Samson. But like I said, when the devil has blinded your eyes, he has blinded you so you don't even reason. This girl is going to come and tell you that he has had this before. When he told his secret and it was used against him. Maybe he forgot. Maybe he had gotten over it. And then it happens. That you've told this woman three good times something and she does the same thing to trap you isn't it supposed to ring a bell like logically speaking what was delila using was she using charms what was she using seriously we need to find out oh pastor john like couldn't add the connection failed that's not good i mean what was she using you'll be wondering like this girl will come and tell you today that tell me your secret. You tell the secret. She does the exact same thing that you tell her. And then it doesn't bother you. The last time they said, the, when the woman asked him a lot and a lot and a lot, it bothered his spirit. This one, they say it vexed him to death. Can you imagine? Like, aren't you just supposed to know that that's just the wrong place to be? That's just the wrong person to be with? See, we're adults here. We should stop all these things. Sometimes I um, Apostle um, Joshua Selman said something which is very true, especially when it comes to the Christendom. A lot of these things of God said has led a lot of people to be in abusive and terrible marriages because God said. 
Yes, God said, but we are supposed to be yielded to what God said. So is that man or that woman that God said yielding to what God is saying? If they're not yielding, you can't be married to them. It doesn't matter. God expects you both to yield to his direction and his guidance. So even if he has said, if you're not yielding to his guidance and direction, I have no business being with you. We are adults. It doesn't take you five years. It doesn't take you 10 years. It takes you months. Three months is even much. It takes you just that much to, to, to be with someone, relate to someone and know that mm -mm, you know, go work. You borrow one and add seven. It won't work. It takes you just a couple of months. And please, let's be intentional. Don't keep people in your space for long and make them to be, to be taken advantage and just... Oh my God, mm -mm. you know, and especially us women will be saying, oh, when he marries us, he will change. He won't change, darling. You can't change people. Only God can change people. And if he's not even looking like he, he, he even understands that what you're talking about is a problem, he will not change. Why would someone be looking for a solution to something that is not a problem? People look for solutions only to problems. And so if you're telling somebody that this thing is a problem and the person is not saying that it's a problem, what makes you think they're going to change? No. Sometimes we say, oh, he's going to change. Why not wait, let him change before you marry? Why the rush? People have told us time without number. Nobody's going to change if they don't want to change. You can't make an adult change. An adult chooses to change. And if you're not seeing any signs of the person planning to change or wanting to change, you shouldn't be in that relationship. Don't be by force. Singlehood is not a disease. Don't let anybody push you. Somebody said the pressure of being in a wrong relationship and the pressure of being single, the pressure of being in a wrong relationship is harder than the pressure of being single. So take your pick. Choose which pressure you're going to handle. Choose which pressure you're going to stay with. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, people. Choose the pressure you're going to stick with. Because people make this thing look like, well, like, no, seriously. Seriously. We have to get a hold of ourselves. We have to get this thing right. You know, it's crazy. It is just crazy. We have to get these things right. We just have to get them right. You see all these things, you see all the signs, you're still there. This lady has asked you this thing one time, two times, three times. You are still there. That is a, is, a, is a thing we as children of God, we also have to learn in a good way. You know, ask the Bible, the, um, and there's the English thing that says push. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. See, people who want to do their evil whims and caprices, they are persistent until they tell them. We, you just pray for one or two days and then you start giving up, you start grumbling, you start getting up. This girl, this lady was embarrassed three times, not in front of just a couple of people, in front of a nation, in front of the lords of a country. She was supposed to have been risking her life to die. And she wasn't giving up because she knew that her life was at risk. She was not giving up. Not even her life was at risk. This one, they didn't threaten. The other one, they threatened. This one, they didn't threaten. This one, they promised to give her much money. They promised to give us so much money. That time when you don't know that what you have is better than what people are promising you. Could Samson not give her money? Samson could give her whatever she wanted, but she didn't know. She didn't know. She was looking for, you know, this is our generation, microwave generation. We wanted na 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 so. If you need can na 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 so, no want that. We want a na 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 na. That's it. That's when we begin to get into trouble. And we're wondering, we're wondering like, what is going on? What is happening? Why is this happening to me? Why is this going on? Why is this? Because we're not doing things right. Because we're missing it. Because we're just not getting it right. But God help us in Jesus' name. I pray that God helps us in Jesus' name. So you see, people, we need to be persistent. We need to use this attribute of Delilah. In the good way. When you want something from God, keep at it and you'll get it. If a woman 
could so persist with an unjust judge. That is an unjust judge. They use that word unjust for a reason. Because if it was a normal judge, it was a normal thing that he was going to address the case. But this was an unjust person. So it means that he was not even planning to address the case. But because the woman persisted, the woman wearied him with her presence. She got it. Then we were asking for the right things. Why would we not weary God? We don't even have time to go into God's presence to go and ask for stuff. Mm -mm, we're too big. I said, we're too busy. See, the, God doesn't just want us to be doing activities for God. He wants us to have a relationship with him. But a lot of us Christians, we're just doing too many activities. We don't have any bond with God. And it is sad. That's why we get carried away. That's why we get deceived. That's why we get um, distorted. That's why we get all these things wrong. That's why... This guy, Samson, will be going to Delilah instead of getting a woman. He had already had an experience before. I don't understand why he didn't learn the lesson. And that's what is happening to some of us Christians. If you go through a situation, you don't learn the lesson, my darling, you are going to get into serious trouble. You're going to keep getting into that same thing until you learn it, until you get it right. His parents told him that, no, you have to marry from, uh, from our tribe. You have to marry from our people. He still didn't listen. And this is him again going out of their own tribe to still go and get a woman, get an harlot. Get, oh, my God. Don't we listen? They say that an intelligent person makes mistakes and learn. A wise person learns from an intelligent person how not to make that mistake so he doesn't even get to make it before learning. He learns from the intelligent person. That is a wise person. Don't you want to be a wise person? There are some mistakes that you make and you never recover. That is Judas for you. He made a mistake and he never recovered. Peter made a mistake and recovered. Oh, yes. Do you only want to be Peter? What if you end up being a Judas? Do you know how the enemy can guilt trip you? I mean, when I didn't know about it, the enemy used to guilt trip me. I would feel so bad. There were some things that when I was not even born again, when I was an unbeliever, I wouldn't dare to do. But when I became a believer, I don't know whether it's that my heart became weak or what. I don't understand. But I was doing some of those things. And then the enemy would use it and be saying that, and you claim to be a child of God. You have so disappointed God. God cannot forgive you. This thing, mm -mm 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 -mm. God cannot forgive you. I'm just telling you, stop wasting your time. All that prayer that you're doing there is a waste. God is not listening. God was listening to me because I told him I'm sorry and I was genuine. And I had a contrite heart and a broken spirit. He says he will not reject. But the pain of that guilt, sometimes you feel it. You just feel guilty. Sometimes it gets to you as much as you know that God is not holding it against you, but it still gets to you. And that's how he got to Judas and he killed himself. So you don't want to be in that position. And then these people take it now and then they're celebrating. Oh God, you know that time when you're falling and people that are looking, that were looking at you, they were waiting for you to fall, they're rejoicing. Then God makes a comeback for you. Yeah, your comeback is going to be spectacular. Hear what they said, that this man killed many more people when he was dying than when he was alive. See, when God brings your comeback, eh? the kingdom of darkness goes shake because they know, they know that terror don't come. See, when you fall, go back to God. He's waiting for you to come back. The prodigal son, his father was looking out every single day and waiting. Will my son realize himself and come back? I want him to come back. I want him to come back. But will he even realize himself? Would he see that he needs to come back? Would he realize himself? He did. The good thing was he did. He did realize himself and he came back. That's all God wants. He wants you to realize that, yes, you made a mistake. Acknowledge the mistake you made and then ask him for forgiveness. He says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He says, come and let's reason together, even though our sins be as scarlet. I'll make them as snow, as crimson. I'll make them as wool. It's the word of God. Trust the word. Believe the word because it's true. He says he will exalt his word higher than his name. 
So yeah, he would. He would. So people of God, I don't know about you. Samson asked God and told God he was sorry. And these people will lose track of your comeback because they wouldn't even expect that you'll be able to come back. The Bible says that as Samson was his was in prison his hair began to grow you know see <laughs> the enemy oh my god he thinks he's so wise but he's not they had already understood that his hair had not been cut and now his hair was cut so he never had hair but he was in prison and his hair was growing it didn't make no sense to them he didn't need to have hair for him to do what he had to do but his hair was growing now. The people were just so carried away with the excitement and the joy of his downfall that they didn't even reason that this guy's hair had been growing back. And then the man just said, Lord, help me. And, and since, sincerely speaking, I think that he would have survived this if he prayed. He said he wanted to die with the people. He said that. That's what he said. They, they, and then you, you know how the people will look at you and then they'll say, ah, you said you're serving God. Which kind of God be that? Well, God don't deceive you. They'll be laughing at you. They'll be mocking you. You said you're a Christian. Look at what you're going through because you made a mistake. Oh, acknowledge the fact that you made a mistake. It doesn't make God less God. You making a mistake after being a Christian, you backsliding after being a Christian doesn't make God less God. Mm -mm. So don't, don't listen to the stupidity of the people that are excited and praising their gods and saying your God is no God because you failed, because you faltered. Mm -mm. God is still God. Whether you get it right or not, God is still God. It's not you're getting it right or getting it wrong that makes God more God or less God respectively. No, God is God by himself. Actually, it is a bonus and a plus for you when you get it right. And a minus for you when you get it wrong. It is for you. It's your benefit or the consequences for you. It's not God. We need to get that straight. So these people are laughing. They're rejoicing. They're celebrating. When your enemy is celebrating, then God shoots you. Like, so basically, when you fall and you come back to God, it's like he sends an arrow. He's about to shoot you again. You know that before you shoot an arrow, like to hit the target, when you have a bow and arrow, you have to pull the arrow back. When you're in your back moments, people will laugh at you because you moved from this point. You move from point A. They have to pull you back to point B before they will shoot you to get to the target to hit the target and the further away they pull you the further ahead you will go child of god see trust the process come back to god he wants you back and samson said let me die with the philistines i wish he said lord let me deal with these philistines and let them know your god he didn't have to die with them. He had that much strength that maybe even that building would have fallen on him. He would have come out. God had done a whole lot of things with him that this would have not been an exception. He would have been able to probably hold the pillars up and it falls only on the people, not him. Oh, yes. God had given him crazy strength, like radical strength. But, well, it was his confession. It was his confession. And that's why they say... Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Your words have power. They either build or they destroy. So whatever you're saying, the, the necessary agents will carry it out. If you're saying the good things, the angels of the Lord will carry on and do. If you're saying the bad things, the agents of darkness will carry on and do. Yes. That's how it works. So those negative things you're confessing, they'll eventually come to pass because God has made it like that. When you speak a word, the spirit realm takes it into effect and brings it to manifestation. So if you're speaking negative things, the agents of darkness will take on. And funny enough, a lot of children of God are making all the agents of darkness more busy than the angels of the Lord who are ministering spirits unto us because we don't give them anything to work on. Instead of confessing positive and good things, you're confessing negative. Who is supposed to be working? Agents of darkness. It's that simple. 
so people i really don't know about you like i just don't know about you but god really loves you and he wants the best like the very best for you can you just trust him can you just trust god can you just rely on him can you just follow his precepts when he says don't do this don't do this and do that it's for your good he knows the end from the beginning he knows the best way his ways are not as not as his thoughts so he knows the best ways so he's telling you don't do this don't do it my dear it's for your good he tells you do this do that which he tells you to do you just might not get out of it judas didn't so be the wise person and learn from the intelligent person so you don't have to go through that hard experience that tough experience and samson held the middle of the pillars oh my god i could imagine the shock how these people were dying and they couldn't even believe it the god they were serving and they were dancing and they were praising could not even save them No one could live to talk about it, right? To testify that oh, Dagon failed. Dagon failed again. See, why people are there rejoicing about your downfall? Sincerely and genuinely go back to God. He will do a comeback for you that people will be wowed. People will marvel. You know how the Bible says when God turned the captivity of Zion we were like they that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with singing. and the people say wherefore we are glad because the lord has done us good see that's exactly how it's going to be you're going to be wowed by what god would do for you when you repent and come back to him and say father i'm sorry i made a mistake he's not going to put you as an hired servant he's going to take you back as his own So it's time for us to snap out of it and come back to God. It's time for us to realize that God is not hating on us. God is not mad at us. He doesn't like sin, but he's not mad at us. He loves us, but he doesn't love sin. And he wants us to genuinely repent and come back. He's yet to heal broken hearts. He's yet to change a destiny. He's yet to do a miracle. He's yet to turn our lives around. We just need to surrender. Total surrender. Let's give all withholding nothing. It's just total surrender God desires of us. Are you ready to surrender? Are you willing to surrender? I don't know about you. Me, I'm ready to surrender. I'm so so ready to surrender. So, that's basically what I learned from this um scripture and sometimes when you get your fall, a lot of people who have been waiting for your fall will be excited. They will laugh you to scorn. They will do all kinds of terrible things. These people were rejoicing, drinking and feasting and doing everything. They didn't see that God was preparing you for a comeback. And so when God did, boom, it caught them by surprise, cut them off guard. God is still in the business of doing such miracles. But I pray that you will not like Samson desire to die with the Philistines. You will desire to be dealt with, but you ain't going to die with them in Jesus name. I always get to say I love you so so very much, but God loves you way way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Gleason, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> and of course, I always say you should study the Word of God and get a personal relationship with God for yourself. Nobody can do that for you. We have the audio Bible on TikTok. We have it on Facebook. We have it on YouTube. We're hoping to get it on Instagram shortly, so just keep um, having us in your prayers. Keep supporting us in the little way that you can. Um, we hope to get a new laptop, and that will help us edit faster and better. So um, I'm sure that's my birthday desire. I'm desiring to get one. Well, if I get it before, I'll be excited. Maybe I'll choose some other thing that I want on my birthday then. But for now, that's the real thing that I really, really need to make my. editing um goes smoothly and easily. So, 
Thank you all for being here today. I'm really grateful. Um, stay connected. Have a great week start and may your weekend end amazingly just like mine has. And may you have all the things that you're desiring from God. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray, oh God, that we're going to stay connected to you. We're going to do all that it takes to stay, to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right things. Just what you guide and direct us to do. That we know that you want the best for us. And so whatever you tell us is for our good. So Lord, we pray, oh God, that we'll be able to stick to your precepts, the manual, the blueprint, which is the Bible. And follow every little bit of thing that is there that is guiding and leading us, oh Lord. Pray that we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to teach us all truths. Guide us and lead us so that we're going to walk the part smoothly and beautifully to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> tomorrow is um, George's chapter 17. Please read ahead of time and come back here. Let's have a small time together, okay? I almost forgot that. Mwah.